Hello students, welcome back to Smart Solutions. I am Nikhil, your science mentor. So in the previous class, that is part one, uh, we have started uh, with uh, chapter number one, crop production and management, and we have completed up to I understand um, two basically steps we have completed involved in agriculture. So these are preparation of soil and sowing right uh, i think we have also completed uh, adding manure and fertilizers how it is done uh, we have also seen difference between manure and fertilizers and how manures are preferred and beneficial over fertilizers and why one should use more manure as compared to fertilizers okay so in this class we will start with irrigation what is irrigation and what are the different methods and what is its importance okay yeah so let us start with irrigation um so do you know what irrigation means in general irrigation means giving water to plants right so as we know that um there are different uh, living organisms plants and animals which both require water for their living right we also know that 70 percent of the human body is made up of water and so water is an important part of everyone's life whether it be plants or animals so all living beings need water to live water is important for proper growth and development water is absorbed by plant roots so how do plants get water plants get water from roots they also get nutrients from the root right Along with water, minerals and fertilizers are also absorbed. Plant contains nearly 90% water. See, plants, they absorb water and with this water, they also absorb minerals and fertilizers. In plant, if you consider the weight of plant, if it is 100 kgs, so of that 90 kgs is only water. So what it means, plants contain nearly 90% water, right? And in human beings, we say that we approximately in human body, 70% water is formed. Uh, water is essential because germination of seed does not take place under dry conditions. So why is this water at all required or why is it important? So during very early phases when we are sowing seeds in the land, so water is required for germination. Without water, there would be no germination of seeds that is sprouting of seeds will not take place nutrients second important requirement is to dissolve the nutrients which we give in the form of manures or fertilizers okay so nutrient dissolves in water are transported to each part of the plant water also protects the crop from both frost and hot air currents so in addition uh, to these fertilizers being mixed with water and then transported to various parts of plant the third requirement is that mm, due to the hot currents that may come during um, you can say summers the water in the plant itself it helps in maintaining the temperature right by transpiration you can say or by any other means thus protecting the crop during heavy temperature rises to maintain the moisture of soil for healthy crop growth fields have to be watered regularly and in order to have uh, a continuously wet land so that water can so that plant can get uh, always water as and when required um, watering should be done at regular intervals so you may have seen that uh, during any of the cultivation we do give plants watering at regular intervals and this supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called as irrigation right very simple what is irrigation so supply of water to plants at regular intervals depending upon the type of crop is known as irrigation the time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop so as uh, just said that uh, say for example if you are taking the production of sugarcane you will require a different uh, time intervals as against if you take the crop of wheat rice jowar bajra so for each and every crop the irrigation interval will be different 
soil to soil and season to season also not only the crop will decide the type of irrigation but the soil say for example if your soil is capable enough to retain water less irrigation will be required whereas if your soil is not able to retain water and just it allows the water to drain off in that case regular and frequent irrigation will be required again there are some seasonal changes so during various seasons the irrigation requirement is also different say for example in rainy season we actually do not have to irrigate because the land will get its water from the rain itself in winter yeah we have to provide irrigation uh, but to some extent because the water present in the land will not evaporate very easily but if you compare summer oh my god in summer the water will evaporate very rapidly and hence you will have to um get this land irrigated very frequently right so irrigation it changes from crop to crop from the soil to soil and also from season to season yeah um so the question is so could it be due to the increased rate of evaporation of water from the soil and the leaves yeah obviously both mm, due to the evaporation of water from soil as well as from leaves there has to be a frequent irrigation yeah the sources of irrigation now um so irrigation means supply of water right so what are the different ways in which we can supply water to our crop so these are wells tube wells ponds lakes rivers dams and canals these are the different uh, ways in which we can get water for our crop so you can see over here there is a moat there is a farmer who will be using Uh, some utensil or vessel to get water and then supply to farm and then here is a chain pulley arrangement shown here is again a rahat rahat uh, to which a bull is tied so he will rotate and this charkha it will uh, carry the water from well or say for example some storage and then it will throw water out here is a, a dikli so these are the different uh, methods of uh, irrigating the land so let us uh, run through them traditional methods of irrigation the water available in wells lakes and canals is lifted up by different methods in the different regions for taking it to the fields so as we know that wells canals or any ponds uh, they are below the surface of the earth so some water has to be lifted up and then it is to be transported to our field so different animal or human physical efforts are required for this so these methods are cheaper but are less efficient so as compared to the present irrigation facilities which uses pumps different types of pumps whether it be driven by generators like diesel petrol or even by electricity right but unlike previously there were no such instruments and it has to be done using physical capital uh so the various traditional ways are moat or pulley system so this is the moat or the pulley system wherein um the farmer is using this pulley to carry water outwards so chain pulley what is chain pulley chain pulley is again a use of some pulley again but to this there is a tied vessel right so once you lift it it will move down and when you will pull it it will pour the water and it will be given out to the land so dekli where is dekli yeah over here is the dekli so dekli is again of the same type of this moat or chain pulley again and the rahat or the lever system over here you can see a wheel to which the some bucket like arrangement of vessels is tied so when it will rotate it will carry water from this bottom and when it will rotate over here it will throw water at this side so it will elevate the water and uh, give water to some other place so nowadays do you see any of these uh, instruments used in farming agriculture or farming activities no obviously these are all replaced by pumps so pumps are commonly used for lifting water diesel biogas electricity and solar energy is used to run pumps so nowadays pumps are used so the fueling or how these pumps operate this operates on diesel biogas electricity and even on solar energy okay so this is the installation of some sprinkler uh, arrangement over here but this is the pump we can say for example or the pump would have been at the bottom 
it could be placed anywhere there could be submersible pump which is uh, within the water and there could be overhead pump which is kept on the surface to this pump there are different pipings which are connected to branches of other piping and these are the final sprinklers okay so these are the modern methods of agriculture yep uh, so we will just uh, look into the modern methods of agriculture now so unlike these were all the conventional methods so now we are looking at the modern methods of agriculture okay so modern modern method of irrigation help us sorry not modern method of agriculture but rather modern method of irrigation so modern method of irrigation help us to use water economically the main methods used are as follows so with the help of this <coughs> modern methods we are able to conserve water so what we will do we will provide only that much amount of water whatever quantity the plant or the crop requires so sprinkler system this system is more useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available the perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals so this sprinkler arrangement is used where there is no sufficient water available and uh, uneven land the land is not in a single level so what uh, how this arrangement is done there is a pump there are some main headers so as you can see over here these will be called as the main headers and to which there are some branches and they are lifted vertically upwards and there is some sprinkling arrangement made on this top right so this is the arrangement so when water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of pump it escapes from rotating nozzle so what will happen whenever the water is allowed to flow it will escape through these nozzles and will be spread into the nearby area it gets sprinkled onto the crop as it is raining so this will be sprinkling water from the top like rainfall sprinkling is very useful for lawns coffee plantation and several other crops so this sprinkling system of irrigation it is very useful for lawns you may have seen lawns in various hotels gardens uh, receptions and many other places right so these lawns and coffee plantation the sprinkling arrangement is very useful for this so next is the drip system so in this system what is done see uh, it is similar to yeah um, sprinkling but over here the headers they are not taken vertically upwards rather they are taken towards the base or towards the shoot system of the plant okay this is the arrangement over here it will go like this and will stand like this again like this again there would be a piping over here and this arrangement like this like this like this like this and like this okay so in this system the water fall drop by drop directly near the root so it is called drip system so in this arrangement unlike sprinkle there would not be sprinkling but there would be drop by drop supply of water to these plants at their root system directly to this place so it is called as deep irrigation uh, it is best technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees but this technique it is majorly used for um, plants like fruit plants uh, it could be any of the fruit plant then gardens where there are trees and in general uh, trees uh, say for example pap papaya or any of the mango tree those are big trees right so why do you think this drip irrigation is important for these trees see if you see any of the garden where there are chiku plants mango plants papaya plants they have a very big distance or empty space between them right because <coughs> in order for this tree to grow a large space is required so if we give water by conventional method <coughs> all the water that will be flowing between these spaces empty spaces that will be waste a lot of wastage will happen due to evaporation of water due to heavy seasons or higher temperature so in order to avoid that we use this deep irrigation water is not wasted at all it is a boon in region where availability of water is poor so this also helps in a region <coughs> where the water is very rarely available because loss is prevented and a very less amount of water is required now protection from weeds this is the fifth step i believe in the agriculture activity that we are seeing so bhajo and paheli went to a nearby wheat field and saw there that there were some other plants in the field growing along with wheat plants uh, have have these other plants being planted purposely so
so you may have seen that uh, whenever there is an agricultural field there are some other plants that grow uh, we do not intend we do not want these plants to grow but still there are some plants that grows right so in many other undesired plants may grow naturally along with the crop these undesired plants are called weeds so what are weeds say for example if you are taking the crop of wheat and we have sowed the wheat in our field but you may say that after certain plants 5 6 10 wheat plants there is some other plant which is not a wheat plant but that is some other which we actually have not sown but it has grown on its own right so these unwanted plant which is present in between our crops they are known as weeds so what do you think do we need to return these weeds or we should remove them we should remove them right but always removing weed is not possible so there are different techniques how these weeds are handled so now let us look at this the removal of weeds is called weeding so the removal of these weeds from our crop it is called as weeding weeding is the activity of removing weeds weeding is necessary since weeds complete with the crop plant since weed compete with the crop plant for water nutrition space and light so what does these uh, weeds do we have plant our plant absorbs nutrients they require sunlight they require water so these weeds they also require the same things for their growth so what will happen when there is weed in our crop our crop will get less nutrients less water less sunlight and this weed will also get or rather because this weed sucks away the requirements our crop will be not getting the full requirements right so we need to remove these weeds thus they affect the growth of crop some weeds interfere with even in harvesting and may be poisonous for animals and human beings sometimes what happens these weeds are poisonous and during harvesting it may happen that we also cut down these weeds and when consumed they can be harm harmful for plants and animals say for example if you um, buy coriander or any of the green leafy vegetables from bazaar you may see that there are we, we when we bring these vegetables we separate out right we separate out from uh, we separate out these vegetables to see that if there are any weeds in that if there are any weeds we remove these weeds and then we take only the um, vegetable and then we chop it and we consume it right so why do we do why do we separate it to see that there is no foreign weed present into this vegetable in order to avoid any of the poisoning uh, farmers adopt many ways to remove weeds and control their growth tilling before sowing of crops help in uprooting and killing of weeds so very important step like tilling is done before sowing so what it will do it will help in uh, killing all the weeds uh, which may then dry up and when the tilling is done the land is left uh, to sun sunshine for some days so that all the weeds that are now removed will just be killed out that is burn out uh, with this solar heat the best time for the removal of weeds is before they produce flowers and seeds so when these weeds should be removed they should be removed before they produce any flowers and seeds because what will happen if they produce flowers and seeds these seeds and flowers will fall on the um, land and again new weeds will grow when they get water and nutrients the manual removal includes physical removal of weeds by uprooting or cutting them close to the ground so there are some methods like manual removal how it is done it is done by cutting the seeds uh, sorry cutting the weeds from their bottom or by uprooting these are the two ways this is done with the help of khurpi so over here in the hand you can see here a khurpi right so this is uh, weeding is done or removal of weeds is done using this khurpi or sickle you can say a seed drill is also used to uproot weeds weeds are also controlled okay we can also see 1.2b figure uh, figure number 1.2b where is it okay so i think it was somewhere upwards 1.2b yeah so see you can also use uh, such type of instruments for removing the 
weeds okay so using seed drills yeah so weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called weedicides so some chemicals are used for removing weeds for killing the weeds they are known as weedicides like 24d so this is the name of a chemical and these are sprayed in the field to kill the weeds they do not harm the crop the weedicides are diluted with water to the extent required and sprayed in the field with a sprayer so what is done so these weedicides are the chemicals so they are sprayed on the farm so in farm both our crop and weeds are present but these weedicides they do not harm the crop they only kill the weeds okay and these chemicals they are diluted before they are sprayed to the required quantity so this is the farmer shown over here who is spraying some weedicide on the crop right he has also tied some mask on his face so that the these weedicides are chemical and they could be harmful to human so in order to avoid his direct contact with this uh, chemical he has tied some cloth to his face <clears throat> so as already mentioned the weedicides are sprayed during the vegetative growth of weeds before flowering and seed formation spraying of weedicides may affect the health of farmer so they should use these chemicals very carefully they should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during spraying of these chemicals okay so now let us look at the harvesting so harvesting is you can say the last step in agriculture produce basically why because the crop has now grown and it is time to cut it harvesting of the crop is an important task the cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting so what is harvesting harvesting is the cutting of crop after it is matured in harvesting crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground it usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crop to mature so depending upon the different crops different time is time frame is required for crop for its complete growth and once the complete growth is done uh harvesting is done harvesting in our country is either done manually or by sickle or by machine called harvester so there are different methods of harvesting uh, it can be done manually with the hands with the help of sickle that is this khurpi in general and also by using some machinery is called as harvesters so here is a diagram this this is in general a harvester which can do the same manual work in very less time in the harvested in the harvested crop the grain seeds needs to be separated from the chaff the process is called threshing so after the harvesting is done the chaffing process is done to separate out grains from the chaff right so this is carried out with the help of machines called combine which is in fact a harvester as well as a thresher so this separation can be done with two different machines or a single machine so what happens in general see uh, harvesting is done crop is cut then for say, take the example of wheat in wheat we know that the wheat grains they are uh, available at the top whereas the bottom part of the plant it is just cut and thrown away so in order to remove these weeds from its coatings or covers it is given to a machine so the machine does some processes and removes the covering of the wheat but it may happen that during this removal some unwanted chaff or unwanted uh, covering may re still be remaining in the wheat so um, this wheat now that is further needs to be threshed so that this chaff and wheat is removed okay so this is the activity in order to separate uh, wheat from the chaff so this is the harvesting harvesting machine so small farmers who do not have capability to use high technology due to the land size or say the cost they will go by manual method whereas large farmers who has got a very large acres of land and who has got good capital they can use this method of harvesting so farmer with small holds of land do not separate do the separation of grain and chaff by winnowing so here is a machine which will vibrate and it will separate grain from chaff so this machine is known as winnowing and you have already studied this in class 6 okay so harvesting festival so few more things about harvesting after 3 or 4 months of hard work there comes the day of the harvest 
The sight of golden fields of standing crop laden with grains fills the heart of farmers with joy and a sense of well-being. So see, farming activity, it actually takes 3-4 months. There are different activities involved. So when all the other activities are done properly, the final activity is harvesting. So harvesting actually is considered as a festival of farmers. Why? Because this is the time when he gets his earnings, right? The effort of the past seasons have borne fruits and it is the time to relax and enjoy a little. The period of harvesting is thus of great joy and happiness in all parts of India. Men and women celebrate it with uh, great enthusiasm. Special festivals associated with the harvest season are Pongal, Baisakhi, Holi, Diwali, Nabayana and Bihu. So all these festivals they are related to harvesting because why? In order to celebrate the efforts of the farmers that they have taken for three to four months and now is the time to enjoy right to be happy for their crops so storage so once the harvesting is done next the process is of storage so let us look at storage of product produce is an important task if the harvested grain are to be kept for long time they should be safe from safe from moisture insects rats and microorganisms so see uh, there basically are two types of farmers the one um, who has got very small land and one who has got a very huge land so if you see the farmer who has got small land so what he'll do he will produce some crop and he can get say for example few quintals or few kgs of waste or any of the crop produced so he may be not worried about the storage because whatever crop he is producing he may require that for his self consumption for the or for his family's consumption right or the small part whichever is left over he may sell it somewhere into the open market but if you consider a big farmer who has got a very big land so he will be cultivating a very huge amount of crop so in that case uh, he won't be able to consume that himself or by his family uh, in a year rather he will not be able to sell say for example uh, in the market when the rates are very low right so if the rates are high he may wish to sell but if the rates are less he may not wish to sell so in that case his crop or his produce needs to be stored right uh, so he can can he do storing anywhere in the farm itself he can do but there are some risk involved if there is rain his crop will wet and it will be uh, like waste or if not rain there could be some other things like moisture insects rats and microorganisms all these things can affect his crop when they are stored in an open space right so again in order to avoid all these things there are different storage facilities so uh, we'll learn them one by one Harvested grains have more moisture. If freshly harvested grains or seeds are stored without drying, they may get spoiled or attacked by organisms, making them unfit for use or for germination. So before storing any of the food grain, we need to heat them. We need to dry up them so that the, they won't attract much uh, pests or uh, insects and they can be stored for a longer period. Okay. So... Hence, before storing them, the grains are properly dried in sun to reduce the moisture in them. This prevents the attack by insects, pests, bacteria and fungi. So, farmer stores grains in a jute bag. So, this is the conventional method. Farmers, what they do, they store, first they harvest, then they dry the harvested product and once the drying is completed, they will fill the bags these are generally the jute bags or metallic bins but metallic bins are not much uh, re, uh, much common things jute bags are the common things however large scale storage of grain is done in silos and granaries so you may see over here these tanks these are known as silos so when there is very large production very big farmer he may use this or any of the merchant or government bodies that buy products or buy crops on large quantities they store their products in such silos so if you can just see this is a cylindrical like arrangement and it is it has got a very huge capacity okay so however large scale storage of grain is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pets like rats and insects dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at home 
so this is again a conventional method where dried leaves are added to the harvested crop why because they prevent attack of insects for storing large quantities of grains in big godowns special chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms but unlikely as we are using uh, neem leaves at home in big storage or commercial storage facilities like this one there are certain chemicals that are used or they are spread over the crop you can say or in a space in and around the area where the storage is done so that other unintended unintended animals or pests will not attack okay so this was about the storage and also we have got um, some food produced from animals okay so whenever we are saying farming it is not only the crop farming but rather it includes some uh, domestic animals farming as well like sheep cows hens so there are also some produce from these animals like say for example we get wool from sheep we get milk from cows and buffaloes and we get uh, flesh from chicken uh, or hens you can in general say so these are also the fruits and they also need some storage so uh, there are also some provisions like cold storage wherein meat or milk will be stored and there could be some cleaning and storage facilities for the wool that we get from sheep okay so there is an activity again for you uh, what it says the make the following table in your notebook and complete it so what are the food items and what are the sources of these items you have to prepare them after completing this table you must have seen that like plants animals also provide us with different kind of foods many people live in the coastal areas consume fish as a major part of their diet in the previous classes you have learned about food that we obtain from plants we have just seen that the process of crop production involves a number of steps like selection of seeds sowing etc similarly animal uh, reared at home or in farm have to be provided with proper food shelter and care when this is done on large scale it is called animal husbandry so in this table you have to enlist all the foods or items that are obtained from animals and then write down the sources like how do we get them okay so this was about uh, <coughs> the chapter that we were in discussion that is crop production and management so hopefully i believe that you have understood all the concepts if there are any things that you still are not clear with and want to have further discussions you may kindly comment and i'll be happy to resolve all your all your queries in addition to this uh, you can go through all these keywords and try to uh, identify if you understood all these and there could also be some exercises so kindly do solve this uh, these exercise and if you have any queries regarding this Mm, please write to us and do subscribe our channels and thank you for visiting um so we'll be coming up with the next chapter very early so please keep visiting our channel thank you